Um, I am trying to join you. Okay, welcome to the Stearns County Board of Adjustments public hearing for August 26th. The first item will be the Pledge of Allegiance, and please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll begin with just a few announcements. Um, if you are in possession of a cell phone or other type of electronic paging device, we ask that you put it on the silent mode at this time. Also, please note that the testimony is being tape recorded for the record. And if you are going to speak, we will ask that you state your name and your address for the record, and then go ahead and add your input after you've been recognized by the chair. Members of the Board of Adjustment are appointed by the County Board of Commissioners with one member from each of the five commissioner districts, one member at large and one member appointed by the Planning Commission. I'll give a brief overview of our proceedings. First, I will read the variance request and open the public hearing. While I'm reading the request, I'd ask that the applicant or the representative come forward and have a seat in front of the board um, by the microphone. And then the applicant will be asked to state their name and address for the record. The environmental services staff will provide a brief overview of the requested variance, the staff report, and any correspondence that's been received regarding this request. Then the applicant will, ha um, will provide any input, um, corrections, concerns, comments that they might have. Once the applicant and or their, their representatives have provided their testimony, then the board will discuss the request and ask questions of staff or the applicant. Upon completing the questions, then we'll ask if there's anyone in the audience um, that is wishing to speak to the request. If there is, I would ask the person to come up to the podium, state their name and address for the, at, for the record, and give their testimony. When all the testimony is complete, then I will ask board members to, for a motion to close the public hearing. Once the public hearing has been closed, um, there will be no more further input from the audience, from the applicant or environmental services staff, unless they're recognized by the chair or if one of the board members wants some type of clarification. All right, mm -hmm. um, our first item on the agenda this evening is to approve the minutes from the July 22nd meeting. Do we have any questions about the minutes or corrections, or do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll Our, second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, um, the minutes have been approved. The first regular item for our meeting this evening is to consider a request from Travis Garrett's Albany Minnesota from section 6.9.5D of Stearns County Land Use and Zoning Ordinance 439 to activate a greater than 100 animal unit feed lot that is less than 700 feet from a residential dwelling. The said ordinance requires a setback of 700 feet to a residential dwelling from an animal feed lot that is registered for 100 animal units or more. The affected property is 115 acres southeast quarter of the northeast quarter of the eastern half of the southeast quarter less part of the southeast quarter of the southeast quarter. Section 11, track 126 north range 31 west of Crane Township. The property address does not have a designated number but is on County Road 17 and is west of 20346 County Road 17, Albany, Minnesota. And is... Um, Mr. Garrett's here. If you could come to this seat up in the front. And if we could begin by Mr. Garrett's, if you could say your name and your address. Travis Garrett's, 20346 County Road 17, Albany, Minnesota, 56307. Okay, thank you. And we'll be back to you in just a, a couple minutes. If our staff member could give us an overview of this request. 
Yes, Madam Chair and members of the board. <clears throat> As you had stated, this applicant is requesting to construct a new chicken barn, a 542 feet from a residential dwelling. The current property, property is 115 acres in section 11 of Crane Township and is zoned A40. The requested 542 foot feedlot to residential dwelling setback is a 22.57% deviation from what's required. <clears throat> He's proposing the two total confinement barns and two control rooms connected to those total confinement barns. Um, those are representative on the feedlot footprint map that's also included in your packet. Uh, the two control barns, which are three and four, are considered non-feedlot structures. The requested 440 animal units would consist of 88,000 broiler chickens over five pounds. The applicant is proposing to transfer the manure generated from this proposed facility. Um, a manure transfer plan that meets the requirements of Minnesota Rules Chapter 7020 will be needed prior to permit approval. All surrounding parcels are zoned A40. Um, the Crane Township, the Star Post, Cold Spring Record, and property owners within 500 feet have been notified of this request. Also included um, below are the alternatives and recommendations uh, as far as conditions. For this application, one is to grant or deny the variance request based on the findings of facts. Uh, the applicant proposed in a feedlot permit application a registration of 99 animal units and permit the feedlot structures that meet the setbacks of the Ordinance 439. Request in a feedlot permit application to be greater than 100 animal units with feedlot structures that meet the setbacks of Ordinance 439 or combined parcels um, that are listed in your re, uh, staff report, then no further encroachment could be applied to the requested fee lot structures. Um, that is all I have for background information, Madam Chair, members of the board, and I have not received any public correspondence in regards to this application. Okay, thank you. We'll do roll call on who was able to visit the site. Dennis? Yes. Jill? Yes. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. Jason? Yes. And I also visited the site. All right, we'll move on to the applicant. If you have um, information you'd like to share with us. All right, thank you. Okay, applicant, um, if you could please share with us. Um, so I'm proposing to put it in this location um, because it'll sit closer to the road um, for the purpose of trucks can move in and out easier. Um, and if you see on the, well, you really can't see on this map, but um, the poorest ground is up on that hill um, so most of the ground around it is um, much more profitable. That's another, that's probably the biggest thing because um, I also have a steer operation that I um, need the corn for. Um, the other thing that uh, I'd like to bring attention to is the house that the variance is for is abandoned, but the reasoning for the variance is then he has a um, place marker if he leaves the house um, standing. So that's kind of all I have to say. Okay, thank you. I'm um, quite. Madam. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Jill. Uh, Madam Chair, Jill DeLong. Um, the question I have just for clarification from staff, um, it says that property owners within 500 feet have been notified of this request. Is it 500 feet of the build site or 500 feet of the property? Just because if this one is 542 feet across the road, I just want to make sure they were notified too. <laughs> Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, yes, it's 500 feet from the actual property. Um, and then there is a minimum amount of individuals that need to be notified as part of the request. And if those aren't reached within the 500 feet, then that buffer goes out a little bit further. So, 
All right, thank you. Questions? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, question for the applicant. Um, closer to the road or further from the road, is there any concerns about disease transmission by being that close to the road? And so is a building site further from the road potentially better for, from that aspect? Um, I have not received any kind of um, notification of disease for that purpose, I guess. Um, so no, I do not believe um, disease control um, won't be an issue if it's closer or further from the road. Good, thank you. And then second question, the size of the barns, how is that uh, determined? Um, that's kind of a standard. Um, Pilgrims has a standard um, barn size for the amount of birds that are, um, they kind of have a happy medium. Um, over the years, they varied the size of the barns, um, and this is the size where it, they perform the best in. So that's the reason for the length and width. Sure, thank you. And Bonnie Mossman, um, is also the distance between the barns, is that also something that is a requirement of pilgrims? Uh, no, that is not. I, um, actually, honestly, I do not know. Uh, maybe uh, you know, I'm not sure. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, um, I'm unsure if it's an uh, actual requirement from Pilgrims, but I will say um, it's very typical for some of the ones that I have reviewed that are over the counter permits. When they're putting the second chicken barn up, they are at that 150 feet, so I could make a presumption that it is probably some standard set forth by pilgrims. Okay, thank you. I, Bonnie Mossman, I just had noticed that most of the ones that we see have a similar distance, so I just was curious if that was a standard or uh, applicant choice. Madam, Other questions? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, one more question for the applicant. Uh, did you look at uh, combining the two parcels uh, so that this variance was not necessary? Um, so if I combined well, I can't because I've got a contract for deed with the 20 acres. I would like to, yes. But I, um, it's a contract for deed that would expire in 2024, which um, is not timely with the fashion of, you know, putting up the chicken barns. Otherwise, yes, I would have, would have definitely considered it, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, other questions? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this application? Anyone at all? Okay, seeing none, um, board members, are we ready for a motion to close? So move, Mike Second. Kane. Jake. Okay, we have a motion from Mike and a second from Jake. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the Public hearing is now closed. We'll move on to findings. And the re variance request is to activate a greater than 100 animal unit feedlot that is less than 700 feet from a residential dwelling. Question one, the proposed use is allowed in the zoning district in which the subject property is located, yes or no? Mike Kane, Madam Chair, uh, 840 zoned they do allow animal feedlots in a 40 zone district. All right, we have a yes for um, number one. Does anyone have any other comments? Anyone disagree with yes? We'll mark that as unanimous. Number two, the variance will be in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the official controls and any related ordinances, yes or no? Madam Chair, the surrounding parcels are also A40, and I think having a chicken barn is in harmony with the purposes around that particular area because it's all farming areas. All right, we have a yes for number two. Any additional comments? Anyone opposed to yes for number two? We'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number three, the variance will be consistent with the comprehensive plan Yes or no? 
Madam Chair, Jill DeLong. Uh, yes, I believe it is consistent with a comprehensive plan under agricultural goals number one, three, and four um, to support agricultural as a desirable land use, to retain areas with highly valued agricultural land or economically viable animal agriculture operations, and number four, to strive for and support higher farm profitability. Okay, thank you. We have a yes for number three. Any additional comments? Anyone disagree with yes for three? Seeing none, I'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number four, the property owner proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner, yes or no? Madam Chair, Dave Gamrod, I would say he's planning it in a reasonable manner because he is protecting the most productive soil on his farm and also uh, keeping his project in order for transportation of feed and manure to be removed properly. Okay, we have a yes for number four. Any other comments? Anyone opposed to yes for number four? All right, we'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number five, the plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. Madam Chair, Jason Crone, uh, I believe it is unique to the property as the applicant stated. Uh, it, it's the location of the chicken barns is to trying to preserve the, the more suitable um, soils for farming. So uh, that's unique to the way that that land is set up. All right, we have a yes for number five. Any other discussion? Anyone disagree with yes for five? Seeing none, we'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number six, the variance if granted maintains the essential character of the locality, yes or no? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, it is an agricultural uh, area and will continue to be so. All right, we have a yes for number six. Any other comments? Anyone disagree with yes? We'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number seven, the need for the variance involves more than economic considerations, yes or no? Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, uh, although economics were discussed regarding um, the profitability, I believe that it's uh, more than that because it also involves the um, actual moving of supplies and removing of chickens and the operability of the site. All right, we have a yes for number seven. Any additional comments? Anyone disagree with yes? Hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous yes. We are now ready for a motion. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I make a motion that we approve the uh, applicant's request for a variance to construct a new 60 foot by 624 foot total confinement barn, 542 feet from a nearby residential dwelling. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Dave Gamrod, I will second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, thank you, Mr. Garretts, for joining us this evening. If you have any additional questions, um, check with staff during regular business hours. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is to consider a request from Thomas Weber, Belgrade, Minnesota, from sections 5.1.3, 9.2.13, and 10.2.17b, and 7.26 of the Cerns County Land Use and Zoning Ordinance 439 to replace an existing liquid manure storage area with a permanent concrete stockpile pad on a property in the Shoreland Overview District that is currently over 25% lot coverage without a current stormwater management plan. The said ordinance allows a maximum lot coverage of 25% in the Shoreland Overlay District and requires the stormwater management plan if 25% lot coverage is exceeded. The affected property is 7.85 acres of part of the southwest quarter of the northeast quarter and the west half of the southeast quarter, sections 23, track 124 north, range 34 west, Lake George Township. And the property address is 38673 County Road 14, Belgrade, Minnesota. 
and attending by phone. Um, Mr. Weber, are you with us? Madam Chair, members of the board, actually, um, I, ha I will call him so he'll be available via speaker phone. So, all right, just we'll wait just a moment second. then until yep. that's he's available. Go ahead, Madam Chair. All right. First of all, um, um, Mr. Weber, we've, are, we've read the application is all we've done so far. Um, I'll do roll call on board members to see who was able to visit the site. Dennis? Yes, and I uh, visited with uh, Tom Weber, uh, who described the project uh, and the work that he's doing to mitigate the water runoff to the lake. Jill? Yes, and I also spoke with Mr. Weber, and I did recommend that um, he uh, talk about tonight the things that he's done to mitigate the water runoff. And Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. Jason? Yep. And I also visited the site and had a conversation um, with Mr. Weber about very similar things that the other two had indicated they spoke to him about. Okay, if staff could give us an overview of this application, please. Yep, Madam Chair, members of the board, I'll give a brief overview of uh, the application here and the request. Um, as stated, he is asking to replace his existing uh, manure storage area with a permanent manure stockpile pad on the property. It's in Shoreland Overlay, which is currently 25% um, over 25% impervious lot coverage without a current stormwater management plan. Our ordinance requires 25% or less impervious lot coverage in the Shoreland Overlay District and a stormwater management plan if the impervious lot coverage is ex exceeded. The property is 7.85 acres in Section 23 in Lake George Township and zoned A80. The parcel was approved by Environmental Services Department on 12-15 of 2005. The parcel is located within the 1,000-foot Shoreland Overlay District of George Lake, which is a natural environment lake. According to Ordinance 439, Section 5.1.3, this parcel is considered non-conforming for animal unit density and impervious surface coverage. Um, our ordinance requires sites that are registered for 10 or more animal units to ha be at least 10 acres in size in A80 zoning, um, and this feedlot's been registered with the county since September 8th of 2000. The 25% impervious lot coverage square footage is 85,486, um, which was calculated by our department, which is 34.95%, um, and then or it's listed in there as approximately 2.74 acres of the total 7.85 acres of the parcel. The parcel does not contain a stormwater plan as it's not required when the parcel was created in 2005. So the applicant's re requesting relief from that as those sections 7.26 and 10.2.17b within our ordinance. The request is replace the existing 99.9 by 99 foot by 6 foot deep LMSA with a 99 foot by 99 foot permanent concrete manure storage stockpile pad, which that's shown on that uh, feedlot footprint map that's also included in your packet. So it's basically the same size that he's looking to replace in the same exact location, just changing how the manure is handled and stored compared to um, previous handling. The animal units are going to remain the same, which is 92.8, which is beef slaughter steers um, and heifers and feeder cattle and calves. Currently, there's no milking on site, and it just is pretty much all dry manure, which is pen pack. Um, we did a compliance inspection by staff June 18th of 2021, and we deemed the site compliant for water quality discharge standards and with Minnesota rules, Chapter 7020. An updated septic certification will be needed to be submitted prior to permit issu issuance since the septic and proposed project area are both located within the Shoreland Overlay District. 
Um, the property was issued a permit for a new 33-foot grain bin April 9th of 2021 from ESD as well. Lake George Township, North Fork, Crow River Watershed, Minnesota DNR, the Observer, uh, Cold Spring Record, and property owners within 500 feet have been notified of this request. Um, and then at the end of their packet, the alternatives and recommended conditions um, are listed there. There's five of them. Um, so if you have any questions about those, feel free to ask. But that's pretty much all I have, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, for background. Okay, and there was no um, communication. Um, yep, yep, Madam Chair, members of the board, I had not received any official correspondence. There was one call from a neighbor just uh, wondering why they got a mailing since they were outside the 500 feet. But again, um, as the previous application, we do require a minimum amount of notices. And so then we make that buffer a little bit bigger to gain those minimum numbers. Okay, thank you. All right, now we will go to the applicant. If the applicant has anything they'd like to share with us. Go ahead, Tom, if there's anything you want to add. Uh, I'd just like to thank the members for coming out, taking the time to come out, and uh, just trying to make that pit work better. So that's about all. Okay, thank you. And we'll be back to you if we have any additional questions. All right, are there members of the board that have questions for either the applicant or staff? Madam Chair, Mike Kane. Could I have Mr. Weber just explain, as he did to the couple of the more members, about his water management that he's done so far? just so the rest of us have that same information. Go ahead, Tom, if you wanna just discuss to the um, board members um, in regards to the current stormwater um, practices and management that you've done. Well, we've added a couple uh, inlets uh, between the buildings. Uh, we actually moved one and uh, added another one to uh, get some of that washing down. And, after the rain today, it's working pretty good the way it looks. Um, that's uh, that's what we've done so far. We added a couple barriers in on that uh, acre and a half behind uh, where the feedlot's empty into before it gets to the ditch. We added a couple of uh, dikes in there. So it's it's been working pretty good now, so. Thank you. All right, other questions from board members? Madam, <clears throat> excuse me, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, just a question for the applicant. Uh, one of the ways of not needing this variance would be either to combine the parcels or to move some acreage from one parcel to the other parcel. Uh, did the applicant consider either of those options? Tom, if you want to just um, answer Mr. Gregory's question in regards to potentially combining acres from the neighboring parcels. Yeah, eventually, once this uh, contract deed is, is finished with my parents, then everything will be uh, one unit, or two units, actually, but the acreage will all be one. Thank you. All right, thank you. Additional questions? Madam Chair, Dave Gamrad, uh, uh, this is a ASCS uh, cost share pro project, I would guess. Um, Mr. Weber, you're probably better to answer this. They were just, uh, Mr. Gamrat was wondering if this was a cost share project or if it was not. No, it was not. I'm, I'm doing this on my own. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, I'm not seeing any additional questions from board members. So um, we are ready for a motion to close the public hearing. Oh, excuse me. I'm glad you reminded me, Mike. Is there anyone in the audience to speak to this application? All right, seeing none, we're ready for a motion to close the public hearing. Mike Haines, so move. All right, we have a motion by, from Mike. Do we have a second? Jason Coronel, second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. The public hearing is now closed. Moving on to findings. The request before us this evening is to replace an existing liquid manure management area with a permanent concrete stock 
pile pad on property in the Shoreland Overlay District that is currently 25% lot coverage without a current water, storm water management plan. Question number one, the proposed use is allowed in the zoning district in which the pro subject property is located, yes or no? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, it's zoned A80 and this is an allowed use in an agricultural A80. All right, we have a yes for number one. Anyone have additional comments? Anyone disagree with yes? Seeing none, we'll mark it unanimous, yes. Number two, the variance will be in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the official controls and any related ordinances, yes or no? Madam Chair, Jason Crone, uh, the intents of the the intent of the ordinance is to manage a runoff into lakes and streams. Um, in this case, the applicant uh, is doing some things to mitigate the water um, and due to some other uh, structures of the property based on the location of this farm, uh, that, that should suffice uh, in that concern and the reason for the ordinance. And I'd just like to add to the comment to that one. Um, after speaking with the applicant, um, they were very proactive in that because they implemented some berms and some other things before that was even in the county's um, ordinance. They enacted some of those things already, so um, we applaud them for that. Uh, so we have a yes through number two. Is there any other discussion? Anyone disagree with yes? And we have a unanimous yes for number two. Number three. Um, the variance will be consistent with the comprehensive plan, yes or no? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, I would point out agricultural use policies uh, three and four, uh, encouraging agricultural practices that allow for coexistence with sensitive natural resources and encourage sustainable agricultural practices that protect water resources for future generations. Uh, as has already been mentioned, the applicant has done a nice job of redirecting water flow away from the lake and uh, has taken into account, uh, you know, as he's putting in this pad, it'll actually be better uh, than the current situation with pen pack going on a slab. All right, we have a yes for number three. Does anyone have additional comments? Anyone disagree? Hearing none, we'll mark that unanimous, yes. Number four, the property owner proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner, yes or no? Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, I believe yes, um, it is a reasonable manner to improve the um, manure storage area on his lot. All right, we have a yes for number four. Anyone disagree or have additional comments? Hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number five, the plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, but for a C4D, um, the applicant would have plenty of acreage and would not need a stormwater uh, management plan, nor would have any issues with impervious surface. Uh, and then again, as we've all already mentioned, uh, the applicant is going to great lengths to uh, divert the water and handle the stormwater plan. So uh, I do think it's unique to the property given the size of the property. All right, we have a yes for number five. Any additional comments? Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, I just wanted to add that it's also considered a legally non-conforming lot already, um, and that includes with the impervious surface co coverage, uh, and he's just replacing the existing manure um, storage area with a different kind. So I believe that because it was a previously legally non-conforming lot, that it's still not um, the plight of the applicant. All right, so we have um, two yeses for number five. Um, any additional comments? Anyone disagree? So we'll mark the number five as unanimous. Yes. Number six, um, the variance of granted maintains the essential character of the locality. Madam Chair, Mike Hain, um, by removing and replacing the existing manure uh, pit is not going to change the characteristics of that neighborhood. All right, we have a yes for number six. Anyone? Have additional comments or disagree? All right, we'll mark that unanimous yes. Number seven, 
The need for the variance involves more than economic considerations, yes or no? Madam Chair, Dave Gamrod, the economics were not part of this discussion. All right, we have a yes for number seven. Anyone have additional comments or disagree? All right, seeing none, we'll mark that as unanimous. Yes. We are now ready for a motion. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, I'd make a motion that we approve the applicant's request to replace an existing liquid manure storage area with a permanent manure stockpile pad on property that, that's in the Shoreland Overlay District uh, that's over 25% impervious lot coverage and without a current stormwater management plan. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Jill DeLong, I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for being with us this evening, Mr. Weber. And um, if you have any additional questions, um, just check with um, environmental services staff during regular business hours. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is to consider a request from Timothy Haig, Watab Inc. on behalf of Sean and Jill Grief, um, Cold Spring, Minnesota from section 6.2.1P, table M of the Cerns County Subsurface Sewage Treatment System Ordinance 422 to place a subsurface sewage soil treatment area less than 20 feet from a structure. The said ordinance requires soil treatment areas to be placed a minimum of 20 feet from a structure and the affected property is lot two, block one of Zindler's Edition, section 20, track 123 North, range 30 West of Wakefield Township. And the property address is 22272 Great Northern Drive, Cold Spring, Minnesota. And is the applicant with us? This is Tim Haig. All right, thank you. And um, are the griefs here with us or you'll be representing them then, Mr. Haig? All right, thank you. Yes, uh, Madam we'll, Chair. And we'll be back to you in just a minute. Um, first of all, we'll do a roll call of who was able to visit the site. Dennis? Yes. Jill? Yes. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. Jason? Yes. And I also visited the site. All right, then um, staff, if you can give us an overview. I don't think I'm on. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, the owners purchased this property in 1998. As you mentioned, it's lot two, block one of Zindler's addition. The existing residential dwelling on the property was constructed with a valid permit in 1985. And the existing drain field that's now failing in that same year, uh, and there was a valid permit on record for that. At the time of the as-built inspection, uh, uh, when it was constructed, it was determined that the drain field was 20 feet from the dwelling. Uh, a new septic tank was installed in 2007. That's been certified compliant for reuse. Uh, and the applicant has submitted a design to replace the drain field. And it's only going to be 10 feet from the residential dwelling and 20 feet is required. The uh, drain field is hydraulically loaded and uh, that's per Mr. Haig, the license inspector and designer. And the variance is being sought in order to uh, maintain the required lake setback of 100 feet for the drain field. The property is within the shoreland overlay of Schneider Lake, which is classified a, a recreational development lake. And Schneider is on the impaired waters list for nutrient eutrophication. Uh, it's also an R1 zoning district. The, as was stated, the drain field is non-compliant, failing to protect groundwater. The septic tank will be reused. Wakefield Township, Minnesota DNR, 
Sock River Watershed District, Sock River Chain of Lakes Association, and the cities of Cold Spring and Richmond have been notified as well as the property owners within 500 feet. Uh, I do have one letter of correspondence. Uh, it's addressed to me, David, I am submitting a testimony in support of my next door neighbors, Sean and Jill Griff, and the installation of their subsurface sewage treatment system. N I will not be able to attend their meeting on August 26th, so if you have any questions, please let me know. And that's from Nathan Larrison at 22274 Great Northern Drive, Cold Spring. Uh, and with that, Madam Chair, it's all yours. Okay, thank you. And if our um, Mr. Hay, if you could give us an overview or information that you'd like to share with us. Madam Chair, thank you, uh, members of the board. Um, the 1985 septic system, as Dave mentioned, uh, is hydraulically full. It is uh, time to replace it. We're replacing a gravity seepage bed with a, an up-to-date uh, pressurized bed with a soil correction for high percentage rock fragments. Additionally, we're adding some tank due to the, due to the uh, tank setback being less than the uh, drain field setback. We don't need a variance for the setback from the lake or structure for the additional tankage, but we are making significant improvements to that system. Um, the drain field is being placed in the same location, in fact, maybe just a whisker further away from the, from the house due to the angle. We've, we've put a little bit of an angle on the system to kind of bump right up to the 100-foot lake setback to get as far away from the house as possible, but one corner still remains at the same 10-foot setback as the existing system. Um, as Dave mentioned, the, the septic tank was replaced in 2007, but it's not large enough to meet code requirements, so we are adding additional tank as well as, 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 well as a pump tank. Um, be happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Um, questions from board members of the applicant or his, their representative? Madam Chair, a question for staff. Um, we looked at, at the uh, 1985 uh, inspection checklist and also the, I think it's 2007 uh, checklist. Uh, it shows uh, that the drain field is only about 10 feet from the house um, on there. Uh, the tank is 18 feet away. Uh, the drain field, uh, if you take all the measurements, is only about 10 feet away. Um, so I, I guess I was curious, um, since it it was already only 10 feet away, um, would have they needed a variance either way if it was only 10 feet away in 1985? Uh, Madam Chair, Member Gregory, uh, on the 1985 inspection report, I'm showing that the drain field was 20 feet from the occupied building. Uh, you know, it, it, it probably doesn't uh, pay for us to spend a lot of time <laughs> debating the measurements, but yeah. on the inspection checklist, it has 18 feet from the septic tank. The septic tank is in the middle of the drain field, uh, so the drain field is uh, a number of feet closer to the house, and so I don't know the exact measurements, but it's somewhere less than 18 feet and somewhere just more than 10. It, it, yeah, I, I guess it doesn't matter if they needed a variance either way. That's what I was really was my question. Uh, required is 20 feet for the drain field, 10 for the tank. It's showing the tank 18 feet from the house in the drain field 20. I, I couldn't speak to 
the measurements taken in 85. No, I, I, I appreciate that. My real question is, would the, they needed a variance either way? And it sounds like they would have. I believe the standard was the same at that time. Shelley Benson, Environmental Services Director, um, the, the distance was is subject to question, but the, the requirement was the same. same. Therefore, they should have, but here we are many years later, <laughs> and that's what we do is we make corrections as we go. Well, and then, Madam Chair, if I may, just one comment. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that they moved it as far from the lake as they could. Uh, and the fact that it's uh, closer to uh, the residents is uh, is less of a concern to me than, than the like. All right, thank you. Any additional comments? All right, then we're ready for a motion to... Oh, I keep forgetting that because we were going going um, completely online for so long. Is there anyone in the audience um, to speak to this application. I'm guessing the one person in the audience is waiting for the next application. M Madam Chair, Jason Crone makes a motion to close public clearing. All right. Um, in, is there a second? Dave Gamrod, I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, so we will move on to findings. Uh, is to play... And the request is to place a subsurface sewage soil treatment area less than 20 feet from a structure. Um, number one, the proposed use is allowed in the zoning district in which the subject property is located, yes or no? Madam Chair, Jason Crone, uh, septic system is allowed in the re residential zoning district. All right, we have a yes for number one. Any additional comments or anyone disagree with yes? Um, Madam Chair, I have a totally unrelated thing. I've noticed the car out in the parking lot with its lights on, and they're going dim. So if someone has a white car with their lights on, it's probably going to go dim pretty quick. All right, thank you. <laughs> Public service announcement. <laughs> yes. All right, thank you. Um, so is there anyone that disagrees with yes for number one? Hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous yes. Um, number two, the variance will be in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the official controls, um, yes or no? Madam Chair, Mike Kane, I believe the official controls want to protect the water quality and make sure that that's the highest uh, protection and function as designed, and I believe this system does both. All right, we have a yes for number two. Any other discussion? Does anyone disagree with yes? Seeing none, we'll mark it as unanimous yes. Number three, the variance will be consistent with the comprehensive plan, yes or no? Madam Chair, Jason Crone, um, I think under nature goals, number one, there's probably a few others that would apply, but to preserve, restore, and protect important natural systems uh, and natural resources. In this case, uh, the the Chain of Lakes system. Um, this is this lot does not allow uh, for a, a conforming drain field. So you have to choose either the lake or the the home uh, to encroach in the setback. And and they chose the home, which is appreciated, I think, um, by the rest of the the watershed owners. All right, we have a yes or number three. Any additional comments? Anyone disagree? We'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number four, the property owner proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner, yes or no? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, for the reasons that Member Crone just pointed out, I think the uh, property owner is using it in a reasonable manner. All right, we have a yes or number four. Any additional comments or anyone disagree? Seeing none, we'll mark that unanimous, yes. Number five, the plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. Madam Chair, Mike Kane, I believe the topography of the land and the, the size of the lot are the determining factors for the placement of the drain field. All right. 
Anyone have additional comments or disagree with yes? Seeing none, we'll mark that unanimous yes. Number six, the variance, if granted, maintains the essential character of the locality. Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, I don't believe that replacing a failing drain field with a non-failing drain field is going to change the character locality. All right, we have a yes for number six. Any additional comments or anyone disagree? Seeing none, we'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number seven, the need for the variance involves more than economic considerations. I think the need is to, ha I would say yes, um, the need is to have an operational um, septic system. Anyone have additional comments or disagree with yes? All right, we'll mark that as unanimous. Yes, we're ready for a motion. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I would move uh, that we approve the applicant's request for a variance to place a subsurface sewage soil treatments area 10 feet from a structure. All right, do we have a second? Madam Chair, Mike Hain, I'll second. All right, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. All right, we'll move on to our next and final item on our regular agenda for this evening. And that is to re consider a request from Jack Shabel, Shabel Enterprises of Central Minnesota on behalf of Scott Wilcox, Clearwater, Minnesota from section 6.2.1P, table M of the Stearns County Subsurface Sewage Treatment System Ordinance 422 to replace a subsurface sewage tank and soil treatment area less than 150 feet from Long Lake which is classified as a natural environment. The said ordinance requires that subsurface sewage tanks and soil treatment areas um, be placed a minimum of 150 feet from the lake's classified natural environment. The affected property is Lot 11, Lumley Edition, Section 8, Track 122, North Range 27 West of Linden Township. And the property address is 18509 Dover Road, Clearwater, Minnesota. And this evening, um, Mr. Shabel, are you representing? Yes, I'm representing Mr. Wilcox. Oh, and could you state your address also for us? My address is 15751 35th Avenue, South Haven, Minnesota. All right, thank you. And we'll be back to you in just a few minutes. Um, first item, we will um, do a roll call to see who was able to visit the site. Um, Dennis? Yes. Jill? Yes. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. Jason? No. Okay. <laughs> and um, I visited the site. So all what one member was able to visit the site. All right. So then we will go to um, the staff and if they can give us their report. Thanks, Madam Chair. Mr. Wilcox owns uh, Lot 11 of Lumley Edition, which is an existing legal non-conforming lot of record, platted back in 1967. He purchased the property September of 2020. Uh, the existing residential dwelling is two bedrooms. It was constructed in the year 1967 per our county assessor's, rec county assessor's records. There are no permits on record for um, the home or the septic system prior to official controls. So due to the transfer of the property, Mr. Wilcox either would have to certify his existing system or submit a design to replace the existing system. Uh, because of the age of the system, most likely it's, it's not going to pass current code requirements. Um, and the size of the lot, uh, Mr. Wilcox is drilling a new well, the location of that well, and also the neighboring well locations make it nearly impossible to meet all the setback requirements. Uh, the applicant, Mr. Shabel, a licensed septic designer, has submitted a design for a new system based on the requested setbacks. Uh, this property is in the shoreland overlay of Long Lake. It's which is classified as natural environment. Uh, Long Lake is not on the impaired waters list. 
the property is located R1 zoning. Uh, the department would ask that you consider a condition to follow erosion and sediment control best management practices uh, for installation after installation, uh, just because it's on such a steep slope uh, to get it seeded and blanketed or hydro seeded, something to that effect. Uh, Linden Township, the DNR Long and Crooked Lake Association and property owners within 500 feet have been notified of the request. And I went through the recommended condition. Uh, I have no correspondence for this request, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. And then we'll go to the applicant. Um, if you could share with us anything you'd like to share. Coming to the property, we had found that the existing system was non-compliant. Uh, any attempt to get something to fit within the setback from the lake and the setback from the near property wells uh, would not come together without this variance. Uh, the two-bedroom two -bedroom septic system uh, is, is what the house was set up for, and that's what they're proposing. No additions, no changes to the house. Um, so I guess trying to be with uh, as environmentally friendly as we can, um, these are the setbacks that we could come together to get him a septic system. All right, thank you. Do we have any um, questions from board members? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, a question for the applicant. Uh, did you look at the uh, possibility of moving the septic system closer to the home um, and uh, further away from the lake and knowing that there, you'd need a variance both ways then? Uh, due to the, the, the slope changing upslope between the proposed drain field and the structure, it gets steep enough and the soils have been compromised so it wouldn't be original soil. It's been backfilled, it's been dug in. Um, so to meet the requirement of Chapter 7080, all natural soils, and the slope that we have between the existing home and that, that's why we chose to go where we did. Okay, thank you. Other questions? All right, seeing no additional questions, um, and as there is no one in the audience for us to ask if they have any comments, um, we're ready for a... Um, motion to close the public hearing. Madam Chair, Mike Haines, so move. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Jake Hawk, second. Okay, thank you, Jake. And um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, the public hearing is now closed, and we will move on to findings of fact. Uh, the variance request is to place a subsurface sewage tank and soil treatment area less than 150 feet from Long Lake classified as a natural environment. Um, number one, the proposed use is allowed in the zoning district in which the subject property is located, yes or no? Madam Chair, Mike Hain, it's R1 zone and these are required. All right, we have a yes for number one. Any additional comments or anyone disagree with yes? All right, market is unanimous, yes. Number two, the variance will be in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the official controls and any related ordinances, yes or no? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, um, it's uh, definitely within harmony. We're taking a system that's not working currently, uh, putting in a system that's going to treat the water and uh, protect our natural resources. All right, we have a yes to number two. Any additional comments or anyone disagree with yes? All right, seeing none, mark that as unanimous. Number three, the variance will be consistent with the comprehensive plan, yes or no? Madam Chair, Jason Crowan, I'll, I'll cite the same uh, nature goal as the previous application, and it's to preserve, restore, and protect important natural systems and natural resources. Uh, I believe this was designed to to try to do that uh, as best as possible with this particular piece of property. All right, we have a yes for number three. Any additional comments or anyone disagree with yes? 
Seeing none, we'll mark that as unanimous. Number four, the property owner proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner. Madam Chair, Mike Kane, I believe it's reasonable for the new owner of the property to want to update it well in septic system and bring it all into compliance for health and safety reasons. All right, we have a yes for number four. Any additional comments or anyone disagree with yes? Seeing none, we'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number five, the plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, the, uh, both the size of the property and the slope on the property, uh, and as uh, Mr. Shabel, sorry, <laughs> um, indicated, uh, given the uh, compromised soils, uh, in the other area, this was the best area to put it. So uh, I think it is due to the circumstances unique to the property. All right, we have a yes for number five. Does anyone have additional comments or disagree with yes? Seeing none, we'll mark that as unanimous. Number six, the variance, if granted, maintains the essential character of the locality, yes or no? Madam Chair, Mike Kane, the character won't change by adding a septic system. All right, we have a yes for number six. Any additional comments or anyone disagree with yes? All right, we'll mark that unanimous. Number seven, the need for the variance involves more than economic considerations. Well, I think this is a health concern as far as having a septic system that operates properly. So we have a yes for number seven. Any additional comments or anyone disagree with yes? Seeing none, we'll mark that as unanimous, and we are ready for a motion. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I would move that we approve the applicant's request for a variance to place a subsurface sewage tank 106 feet and soil treatment area 85 feet from the ordinary high water level of Long Lake. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Madam Chair, Dave Gamerad, I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none? Motion carries. And if um, if you have any additional questions, you can check with environmental services staff during regular business hours. And thank you for being with us, Mr. Shabel. All right. Um, item number five is going to be um, the Lawrence G. Strait Trust application is continued until the September 23rd um, meeting 2021. Um, any questions or comments about that continuance? Do you need a motion on that, Madam Chair? Wouldn't hurt. Okay. Madam Chair, I, I move to continue the request from the Lawrence G. Strait Trust to the September 23rd meeting. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Jason Cronel, second. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Um, motion carries to continue... Um, item number five to the September 23rd meeting. And then our next item on the agenda is to discuss the scheduling for the November-December Board of Adjustments meeting um, to look at either um, December 2nd or December 9th. Does anyone have a preference or a conflict? I will be out of town on December 2nd. So the ninth would be my preference. All right. Well, and the ninth actually would be my preference too because my birthday's on the second, and <laughs> okay. don't want to go to a meeting on your birthday. Try not to be offended. Friends, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, my family might debate that. But, um, anyone else? Ninth is better for me. Ninth. All right. No conflicts that I know of. I have a conflict on the ninth, so Well, is, is there, I mean, the second is fine, but you have a conflict on the second. I'm out of town, okay. but honestly, I mean, okay. whatever works well, for people. I'm, I think I think the ninth, it sounded like the majority yep, ninth will work. thought they would go with the ninth, so we'll go with the ninth. Okay. And then I believe the other item on our, it's not on our agenda, but to discuss the September, um, there were 10 applications 
There was an email that came out, and I'm not sure how many people responded to that, um, whether we want to do one um, meeting or whether we want to split it into um, the, the normal meeting date and then the following Monday. Um, what is... What kind of a response did they get back at the office? Or? Madam Chair, uh, Dave Nett, Environmental Services. Uh, it looks like we heard from Jill, Mike, Dennis, and yourself. Uh, so we're just looking for Dave, Jake, and Jason. Yeah, I, I didn't respond. I owed Lori a response yet. Whatever. There's not enough nights in September the way it is. So. <laughs> and, you know, my thought is if, depending on what the items are, if the meeting went as quickly as this evening's meeting, then 10 would be, you know, it'd still be a long meeting, but it might not be extraordinarily long. So I would be fine with either way. I believe there's one septic, one feedlot. Um, so... For the short meeting. Okay. I much prefer two meetings, <laughs> just because 10 is a lot. That's, right. That's a long night, yeah. 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 There's hours of bound to be Mm -hmm. And as I said in my email to the staff, my thought always is, too, are we doing justice to those applicants that are number 9 and 10 on the list because, you know, everybody's tired and they want to get done, and so are we doing as good of a job as we would? That's and Madam Chair, members of the board, just a heads up on the one that was continued, number 5. Um, it, it's an unpermitted deck in the bluff impact zone. And it, it's very complicated. We, uh, and as we were reviewing for the staff report, we found an unpermitted shed that doesn't meet the property line setback. That wasn't noticed. So, so are you saying we should move to three meetings? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's necessary. Well, that's not but the case, no. But it's just that we wanted to make sure it was right. So. No. Right. Just, just for I am looking at my calendar, and I actually missed the 23rd regardless. So. Monday Monday would work um, right now, but okay. I have a, a work commitment on the 23rd. Okay. And that would be the 23rd is our regular one, right? Yep. So, okay, so then we are set for September 23rd, and then the following Monday is the 27th. All right, I think we have consensus on, on that, it looks like, around the board, so... Madam Chair, just informational. Um, these placards were something because our, in some instances when we go out to sites, people don't know who you are. So having these available on the dashboard is something that was um, considered. So if you want one, we can have your name on it, the term, your term on it. And then if people have a question, you always have our number right there handy. So if you wanted one, some people have had issues. Obviously, I've heard no's from some people, so they haven't had any issues, which I think is great. Um, it's often when they people don't identify themselves. I think you guys as Board of Adjustment have been really good about identifying yourself on site. So um, if, it, if you want a placard, you just let Lori know, and we'll get one made up for you and get it laminated. Otherwise, if you don't want one, that's okay with us too. We're just trying to make sure we're giving everybody all the options. <laughs> if you have any complaints, here's my phone number. I think the one time somebody yelled at me, she would have yelled at me whether I had that in my window or not. That is a true <laughs> statement. Yes, and we are waiting for um, sleeves that they go in so that they, uh, so that you can, you know, like a lanyard situation. Yeah, so... So basically, Bonnie, Bonnie, Dave, or Jill, do either, any of you guys want, that was a no, no, no. We are a no. It's good enough. That'll work. Okay, that's all we, I had. I move we adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. Thank you.